I recently had an opportunity on a Subaru Drive program to spend some time with Molly Taylor. Not only did we spend some time in the car, but she also granted me the opportunity to do an interview which I was going to transcribe into an article. However, when I realised what a delightful young lady Molly is and how genuine she is, I decided that it was way better for people to hear her talk rather than have me write about it. So here is a very unsophisticated, raw interview with Molly Taylor and her Subaru cohort, Chloe Fraser. Okay, now this is very serious. You realise that, don't you? Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> right, Mike, we spoke a bit yesterday about how you started. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it could be said that you've got an unbelievable pedigree in the um, rallying yeah. sort of history, and yet you're a late starter, as we spoke about. How yeah. do you think that sort of affected you one way or the other? Um, when I, I guess when I did start and then after a couple of years and, um, you know, it's a, it's a really tough sport and there's so many variables. So it's, you know, in terms of other motorsport in rallying, you mature or you sort of reach a peak when you're sort of late 20s, early 30s, which in other forms of motorsport is very late. Um, so from that point of view, when I was younger, I was sort of joke that, you know, I wish I started a bit earlier. So I, I as was at a better level when I started, you know, when I was 16, I was starting from you know, I was so green and starting from scratch and it took me a while to get enough confidence and, and to, for in my mind, I think it, yeah, it took a long time to, to get any good at it. Um, but on the flip side, I think if I, if, if that um, influence from my parents and family came when I was younger before I decided that's what I wanted to do, um, I don't think the motivation would have been as strong. I don't think you're willing to go through all the hard yards, the sacrifices and all that kind of stuff if you feel like you're doing it because it's what your family does. Um, so I think ultimately it was better doing it a bit later purely from the fact that it was something that I decided I wanted to do 100% for my own reasons and my own passion for the sport. Um, and you know, I was fortunate that uh, I was exposed to the sport because of my parents. But um, yeah, there was never any, any pressure. I think... They probably would have preferred me to play tennis or something like that. <laughs> so, have you done any other motor sports other than rallying? Only rallying, really. Um, I've done you know a few bits and pieces for. I've done uh, two circuit races for for a bit of fun and um, you know some side by side Polaris um, races and you know a few fun things like that. But yeah, it's always been rallying. Okay. Uh, okay, so just observing you for the last couple of days, <laughs> you've got a very competitive streak. Yeah. <laughs> and you seem like a bit of an adrenaline junkie. Mm. So was this something that was always with you and it came out in the rallying or did the rallying bring that out in you? No, I think it was always in, in me. I was obsessed with horses when I was little and um, used to compete in eventing. Um, and, and the sort of cross-country component of that is quite an adrenaline rush and um, statistically more dangerous than most sport. So uh, I think that adrenaline com- competitive side was always there. I was just channeled in the early years through a different sport and then when I found rallying it all kind of clicked together. Okay so the skill set of what you need to do is just way beyond what any normal sort of person does in terms of driving. How did you actually develop that skill set? A lot of time is the main thing. Um, It's something particularly because you know you can't like uh, football or something you can't go and kick a ball every day rallying you you don't your opportunities in the car are quite limited so it it takes a lot of time and a lot of experience and unfortunately a lot of mistakes expensive (laughs) ones it's an expensive way to learn but it's a fast way to learn yeah um yeah there's no really way around that i think you know you can have to some degree a natural ability to be able to feel grip and and have that kind of reaction and and that side of things but ultimately i don't think anyone's born a, a true natural driver because it's not in any way in our genes or nature or instinct to drive a car that's that's completely a a learned skill um so yeah your ability to pick up things can be you can naturally be better at that but ultimately it's yeah there's no way to really get better except for time in the seat you'd have to say that there are some naturally better drivers than others some people just can't drive yeah 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 yeah, i mean i guess that comes down to how how good you are at um yeah judgment and feel and anticipation and and those kind of things and how quickly you can apply that to a car yeah because most people going to be reading this have got zero idea of what it would feel like can you explain the feeling of driving through the forest at 200 kilometers an hour yeah it's it's difficult to describe it it's um I mean, I think as Chloe can say, you know, we've got <laughs> Chloe in the car, and uh, until until you get in the car, it's it's that 
I mean, you can explain it as much as you like, but that buzz is just unreal. I mean, I, I guess if you try to explain it, it's a little bit like um, like like a roller coaster kind of a feeling, roller coaster cross. Um, you, you're actually trying to dance the car, um, and it should feel when you get it right, like like the car's dancing, like it's pivoting from one corner to the next, and it's um, you know, it, it might look like sort of wide and aggressive from the outside, but it actually should be you know very smooth and flowing, and you just um kind of yeah working the car across the surface to try and uh yeah basically stay right on that edge of grip without going over it so you've always got some bit of traction loss um and you're managing how much that is but yeah it's it's pretty uh it's a pretty big adrenaline rush (laughs) okay rallying really is a sport where um skill sets can be equally learnt between male and females um yeah the the more money you pour in the better the car the better results are with some luck along the way, mm-hmm. so it's 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 a it's a sport where you can compete directly with the men, mm-hmm. and as borne out by the fact that not only you, sort of the female rally driver, but the youngest rally champion as well. Do you sort of how do you then reset your goals once you've achieved that first one? Win another one. <laughs> well, my mum's won four, so <laughs> she she has bragging rights at the dinner table. So if I could beat her, I would be really happy. Feels like I'm starting to, you know, go run too far. Um, she yeah, brings me back into line. With you that. need to allow us whatever we are, we can <laughs> over you guys. Okay. Do you feel an inspiration or a responsibility or a passion to inspire females to do whatever they want to do? Uh, at, we, at the beginning, no, not at all. <laughs> um, I was just probably really um, focused in what I was doing and and wanting to prove uh, myself. Um, and I never really thought about the larger picture at all. Um, and I think in the past couple of years, being with Subaru and, and the sort of profile and the exposure and, and the more things we're doing outside of the car in the general automotive environment as well, um, has been a massive eye opener into, um, how many young girls we see come, come up to the rallies and, and get in touch online. And, um, that's, yeah, it has for me changed quite a lot of things because you, um, you do then stop and think about it and, and, and look at it from a different perspective and I think uh, it's still probably f- for people outside looking in at the sport it looks quite daunting and male dominated and um, the reality when you get inside you know it's a much more welcoming and supportive environment but um, yeah I think there definitely is those it's interesting to look back and, and see those young girls and um, there was there's one particular girl that comes to comes to events and um, she she made a little her own YouTube video about explaining rallying and and for me the biggest thing um, that I think we're doing and and the positive impact that has had is when she was describing a rally driver she referred to it as, referred to the driver as a she um, which is the first time I've ever heard that and that was her first reaction um, to automatically assume that a driver was a girl and I think yeah be, being able to have, do something that powerful um, for you know young impressionable girls you know for me my mum was doing it so. That was never a barrier for me, and um, I think that was, you know, a huge help in my mind because I never had to overcome that obstacle of thinking it wasn't a place for me. So I think, that, you know, that's not necessarily for anyone wanting to get into motorsport, but just girls being able to think that they can find something they enjoy and they can do it. Um, you know, that yeah, I, I feel like that's really an exciting part, and I like to be more of that now. Awesome answer. It's only like a 10-minute answer. I was like, you can wrap it up, Molly. No, that was, that was a good answer. You don't, you don't get wrap up for me. Really. Okay, so you, you're, you're, of course you can't do it all by yourself. There's your sponsors, Subaru. Mm. There's um, all the team around you, engineers, your um, mechanics, all the people that sort of fill up the team, plus your co-driver. Mm-hmm. You've a new one this year, Malcolm. What's he like? How does he sort of help you in the, in the car? <laughs> he, Malcolm's awesome. Um, so I had Bill Hayes previously for three years and... Um, yeah, it was fantastic, but he decided to retire at the end of last year, and, and we spoke about it a lot, and I, I knew that's what he wanted to do, and then we spoke about uh, the replacement, and we kind of picked a replacement almost together. I had a lot of input from him, and I I knew of Malcolm, and I'd sort of said hi in passing a couple times at various rallies, but that was the, the extent that I knew him, and it was really Bill's recommendation from doing um, events in the Asia-Pacific Championship um, against Malcolm. Um, so he knew him a lot more, and... Um, we, I had one weekend, I, he flew over from New Zealand and we, uh, went out and 
I, I showed him how my page notes work and we kind of discussed things and um, really then just jumped straight into it. So it was a bit of a risk at the first round, uh, but it, it, we've been very lucky. It's worked very well. He's exceptionally good on the pace notes, which is the fundamental thing. Um, but I think what a lot of people don't appreciate is all the other roles that a co-driver, a good co-driver can add to the team. And, you know, he's a mechanic by day. So, um, you know, if we do have any issues on the side of the road, he's extremely capable. Um, that's, you know, obviously a big plus. And, but for me, the other biggest plus is just his energy and his motivation and his attitude. It's just nothing's ever a problem. He's incredibly determined and competitive and, you know, really wants to win. And, and when things aren't going well, he just has a way to, you know, look at the positive and, and keep motivated and having that kind of energy in the car is, um, you know, it's all that confidence for the driver. So if you've got that really upbeat, positive energy around you, then it's, um, yeah, it's, it's hard to, uh, you know, get a bit down if something's not going right or not drive well because you're always being lifted up. Would you say you're a harsh critic of, you, of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <the harshest. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, probably quite common with a lot of people. It's um, yeah, you're always your harshest critic, and I think what one of my um strengths, I suppose, is being quite analytical and being able to um, you know, think things through, and um, you know, yeah, I guess use that that kind of strategy in in my driving. But um, then it can also work the flip side when you analyze and overthink everything so i have to i have to manage that it's one of my favorite sayings strength is your weakness yeah yeah, yeah. very true yeah um okay so how do you maintain your focus but also stay relaxed while you're driving the stages mm, it's a good question <clears throat> um it's not always easy um it's it's quite hard to get into that kind of zone as they say where everything's just just happening and um I, a lot of discipline i find because it's very easy to start thinking too big a picture and thinking about how everything in the rally is going or what's happening after the next stage and really when you get to the stage all you need to worry about is the next corner and not get further ahead of yourself so I think it, that's that's quite hard to do and it, it's a you know trying to be disciplined to not let yourself think about anything else and just always bring your mind back to the what's directly in front of you um, and if you can can be thinking that small in the, in the moment then it's yeah it's easy to, to concentrate control for it much no <laughs> not even remotely it's not like she stands there looking over no. like Fisher's shoulder like what are you doing can I just see yeah. I mean yeah I guess you know it's you know you obviously want to be in control but it's also um yeah I mean you're so invested in everything that it's kind of yeah you, you want to know when you're interested and, and that's the great thing about having that team around you because everyone is that invested but they've all got their strengths so you know We've got our guys here yeah, fabricating new brackets and, and whatever, and I probably don't need to know all about it, but but that, that's what they've slaved over for hours, and I'm interested, and they're interested, and they're happy that I'm interested, and, and that brings the whole team together because then you know you're all you're all working together and trying to put things together, and and you know you go through all those lows and those hard times together, and then when it finally comes right, it's just it's way more special than if you just were your lone horse doing it on your own. Plus, the reality is, you and Mark are the ones taking all the risks. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, and, and the boys, um, you know, they, they have that appreciation and understanding because, you know, we're going out there knowing that, that they've done up all the wheel nuts and, and yep. you know, they realise the magnitude of their responsibility and then we have 100% faith in them too. Drew yep. did spend four hours drilling a new hole in some piece and, you know, having to go so excruciatingly slow because if he went any further, it would destroy the whole thing. It, beyond my understanding of what he actually did. <laughs> but it boils down to he spent four hours drilling a single hole. Yeah. You know. that, yeah. Well, you need that sort of dedication, don't you, mm. in the team? Any advice for L and P plate drivers about basic driving skills to keep them alive? Yeah, I mean, driver training. It's just so underrated and underutilised. It's, it's crazy. Um, we were actually chatting about it this morning when we were driving. I think, you know, to be able to get into a safe environment with off the road, without the distractions of other cars on the road and everything that goes with that, to be able to actually understand and be comfortable with how to control the car, I think, is just um, so crucial. And um, for me, when I got my learners and, and when my sister got my learners, uh, my dad made us, he was running a rally school at the time, and he made us go and drive the rally cars so we could drive manual we drove on a loose surface we felt a car slide we caught we caught the slide we learned how to do all that 
and the the aim was just to make us competent on the road so we weren't you know looking down at the gear stick for third gear we were actually looking ahead um and explain all those basic principles and, and that's actually ironically how i started rallying because that was my first real experience of a rally car and it's like oh right this is i get it now um but yeah i just think that that is is so so critical and to have the appreciation of what the car can do what happens when it goes wrong what you do in that circumstance um yeah i don't think it breeds people being overconfident and hooligans i think it gives people a respect for for the car and and their responsibility on the road another awesome answer um in a sport that is traditionally funded by privateers with very few work sponsorships mm. what does subaru sponsorship mean for you um yeah it's it's difficult to put that into words um it's still it's still surreal and i guess it's one of those things that um you know you get excited about something at the beginning and then the novelty wears off and but it doesn't feel like that at all it's still yeah you still pinch yourself every day and it's um yeah 11 years i guess of of trying to uh make it as a job and to finally get that to happen and um yeah, to, I guess to have the ability to then be able to focus on it 100% as your job and not try to piece together all the other, you know, have another job and find the sponsors and um, just to be able to, yeah, focus on that is just, yeah, it's unreal. So yes. What's it mean for Subaru to sponsor Molly? Um, obviously, motorsport has been a massive part of Subaru's profile, um, you know, with the likes of Possum Bourne and Cody Crocker and, and Colin McRae, like, these are, are legends and icons and, and they really helped build the Subaru brand and particularly, you know, the Rex STI. It's become probably one of the most iconic vehicles in the world and special editions like the 22B are, are some of the most sought after vehicles. Um, so you know, taking a break from that as a brand, um, it, it's been fantastic to be able to, to get back into it and to get into it with a, with a female driver has been fantastic because it's opened up new avenues for us as well to speak to a female audience and, and to connect with a younger audience. Um, I don't think we necessarily thought that was going to, to happen when we started the team, um, but Molly's connection and, and aura that she has and, and is able to, she comes into service and jumps straight out of the car and is, is immediately over talking to people. And, and, you know, there's, as she's getting back in the car, she's signing autographs for kids. So that connection that she's made with those that next generation of, of people and hopefully next generation of Subaru owners um, is beyond, val beyond valuable for us. Okay, so outside of motorsport, what are your hobbies, your passions, sort of what inspires you? Well, I've had to find hobbies because <laughs> um, previous to working with Subaru, I was yeah, working in and prepping the car and finding sponsors and More I just, focused. Yeah, and then, then I got this job and, you know, it, it's obviously there's the there's a like it's an awesome job, it doesn't feel like a job, but there's still, you know, hours and hours and hours of work that goes into it, but not, I guess, to the same extent as it was before. So I had a bit of time to find a hobby and I realised I didn't have any hobbies apart from motorsport. Um so I started doing some triathlons. Um yeah, really enjoying bike riding now. I've just got a mountain bike. Um so yeah, enjoy that all, all the kind of training and um, yeah, being outdoors and exploring and and all that kind of stuff. Um, water skiing, I'm a very bad water skier. <laughs> so yeah, just just being able to do things that complement motorsport, um, but uh, yeah, just a little bit of a different track. So tying a couple of questions that we've asked and what we spoke about yesterday. You do, uh, do some public speaking mm -hmm. and motivational speaking, and also what sort of initiatives are you undertaking given your now role as a role model for younger females? <laughs> uh, well, the most exciting one is um, I'm an ambassador for the Dare to Be Different program, which is a program that was started by Susie Wolf and the um, the Motorsport Association in the UK, uh, and then CAMS in Australia have now. Um, launch the Australian arm of that so we could do things locally so that I think is uh, really exciting because that's going to be um, have a lot more reach being run by our national body and being able to take um, you know lots of school kids and, and young groups and just uh, expose girls to motorsport in all, all forms and at all levels and all roles and just kind of uh, show them what what motorsport's about we had a school group come to the Formula One a lot of those girls didn't even really 
know what Formula One was or never been there and they got a full tour of the Williams pits and got, yeah, like right up to the F1 car. It was incredible. Um, but just to see their eyes light up and it's something that they wouldn't have necessarily even thought of previous to that. And now they were doing practice wheel changes on go-karts. They were going back to, to study science to be engineers and it was just yeah it was really heartwarming so I think that is going to be really powerful. Do you enjoy the public speaking side? I do actually I mean it's it's quite daunting <laughs> I think I need more practice but um, I, I enjoy um, yeah trying to it, it makes me think about things in a different way as well and, and kind of go through um, my experiences and, and sometimes when you when you look back on things as well it's you know, in the moment, you're so focused on what you're doing that when you look back retrospectively, um, you kind of see some things in different ways and, and you learn a lot yourself and then being able to obviously meet all different networks and um, a lot that I learned from those kind of corporations and companies as well, how they operate and, and how, I mean, ultimately, motorsport has to be business and it has to be profitable for for me to still be able to drive. So trying to think about it that way as well, um, yeah, I enjoy that side of things. And my final question... Two words. What's your least favourite and your most favourite word? Falafel is my favourite. <laughs> Please explain. I just love the word falafel. Doesn't okay. that sound awesome? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that Have bad? you ever read that book he died with the falafel in his hand? No. You should, actually. <laughs> yeah. Falafel. I don't know what my least favourite word is. Oh. I don't know if I have a least favourite word. Okay, you can think about that one. We can pop that, that in one. later. Yeah. Yeah. It's falafel. I feel like I need a better favourite word. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Falafel. It doesn't need to be... It really doesn't have to have a purpose. <laughs> yes, so. it's just a great word. Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> well, that wraps it up for my time with uh, Molly Taylor and Chloe Fraser from Subaru. Molly, thank you very much for the time you have granted me over the last few days and I thoroughly enjoyed our little chat and chats in the car. I wish you great success for the remainder of this season and also for the future seasons with Subaru.